I've been holding on to a bunch of these adapters for a while now, and it's time to look at how a bunch of other power adapters in the Bassius Power Adapter lineup do when compared to lots of other adapters. Today, I'm looking at adapters from 30 watts up to 100 watts. In this series, I try to answer the question, which power adapter do I want to get? The videos get technical, so hang on and always ask questions if you don't understand something. The performance is measured and compared to near competitors to see how each one stacks up. If you want to help out the channel, see the links on my webpage or in the description. Patreon is now live, as well as the super button. Thanks to my current patrons. First, let's get these power adapters opened up and see what's inside. Bassius packing is very consistent. They don't leave room for much extra, which is good to keep waste low. Each power adapter comes with a set of stickers we have seen before. They come with a warranty card, which is nice, and they also come with a user manual. Here is a little excerpt from the user manual showing port sharing, which is quite confusing if you ask me. The infographics are much easier to use. Some of the power adapters come with cables, some do not. In this case, I have a white version of the 100 watt USB-C to C cable, and this will be for round four of USB cables. Bassius does have a tendency to wrap everything in plastic, sometimes more than one layer of plastic, or a plastic tray, a plastic bag, and then also wrap the adapter in plastic. This I am not much of a fan of, but hopefully that improves when future products. All of these adapters share Intertech or ETL for their safety listings for the Canada and US markets. Sometimes it's in giant letters on the side of the product. I guess it is okay to be proud of the work to get a safety listing. Ah. These adapters all have the DOE 6 mark, which is a requirement for the idle power consumption and efficiency from 25% to 100% usage. This will be something to check later on. Here are the weights for these adapters. The smaller adapters ended up being about twice as heavy as the Anchor Nano 2 30 watt adapter, so for 30 watts, not too light, but still under 100 grams, so not weighing you down by any means. The 65 watt adapters were actually fairly lightweight for what you get. Obviously, the desktop adapter is heavier with its cable. The 100 watt adapter is also on the lighter side. Let's take a closer look at each of the adapters. I have two 30 watt adapters. The three port and the two port are how I'm designating them. Two port adapter is a little more compact with its folding plugs. The 65 watt adapter span a wider range of time. The three port GAN 2 adapter is from 2019 but shares essentially the same features as the GAN 3 adapter except you get an extra USB A port on that 2022 model. The 100 watt adapter is the only 100 watt from Bassius I have left to review and it only has one USB C port. Nice and simple. In terms of what they can charge and how the port sharing is done, these adapters have quite different marketing across the various devices. I am a fan of these infographic charts, although this one doesn't look entirely correct since the numbers add up to way more than 65 watts. They do state that for any multi-port device, the device may reset a few times as it renegotiates the power delivery. I like that they give this warning, and it is true. Any plug and unplug resets the adapter. The older 65 watt adapter just has a string of text, and that is pretty hard to decipher. Starting with the 30 watt two port adapter, actually the newer of the two. This adapter has a lot of modes of operations. It uses the USB power delivery 3.0 specification to increase the voltage to more efficiently charge connected devices. The USB-C port can deliver 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20 volt fixed output voltages. And it can also deliver a programmable power supply output voltage of 11 volts or 16 volts at the full 30 watts. The cost for this adapter is $20. The power adapter turned off when overloaded at 36 watts, which is a safe limit. The overload test makes sure the adapter doesn't try to deliver power into something that will cause damage to itself or your other devices. The adapter recovered to 5 volts after removal of the overload. All of the adapters behave this way. When we look at the overall data, the idle power consumption is high and noisy. The general performance of this adapter isn't amazing, and being a 30 watt power supply, expectations are no power factor correction, which it lacks. I would expect some reasonable performance, but this one does not deliver. The idle power consumption this adapter put it out of tolerance with the DOE 6 requirements. On to the 30 watt 3 port adapter. This adapter has lots of modes of operations also. It uses the USB power delivery 3.0 specification. The USB C port can deliver 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20 volt fixed output voltages. It can also deliver a programmable power supply or PPS mode of 11 volts at the full 30 watts. The cost for this adapter is $18, which is not bad for what you get. The power adapter turned off when overloaded at 39 watts, which is a safe limit. The power adapter recovered to 5 volts after removal of the overload. When we look at the overload data, the idle power consumption is lower, but still noisy. The general performance of this adapter is better, but still very much on the lower side of things for this class of adapter. This adapter is not taking home any awards. The adapter did, however, fall within the requirements of the DOE 6 efficiency and idle 
power levels. 65 watts and we have three ports. This is an older adapter, 2019 era, but still modern. The adapter has lots of modes of operation also. It uses the USB power delivery 3.0 specification and the USB port can deliver the usual 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20 volt fixed modes and can also deliver a programmable output voltage of 11 volts with the full 45 watts. This adapter costs $37, which is not bad for what you get. The power adapter turned off when overloaded at 81 watts, which is pushing it a little far, but at least it turned off. When we look at the overall data, the idle power consumption is okay, but still noisy. The general performance of this adapter is okay when taking into context the lack of power factor correction. The real power efficiency is actually quite high. The adapter meets the DOE6 requirements. If I had to choose a 65 watt adapter, this still isn't it. 65 watts, a new generation of gallium nitride, now at 3, whatever that means, and we gain another port. This is a new adapter. This adapter has lots of modes of operations also. Again, the USB power delivery 3.0 specification and the USB-C port can deliver the 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20 volt fixed output voltages, and it can deliver a programmable power supply output voltage of 11 volts at a full 45 watts. The cost for this adapter is $66, which is quite expensive. The power adapter turned off when overloaded at 83 watts, which is pushing it a little bit far, but at least it turned off. The issue here is a 65 watt 3 amp rated cable may not be up to the task of an extra entire amp, but it still most likely is not going to cause a fire. When we look at the overall data, the idle power consumption is still high and noisy. The general performance of this adapter is bad when taking into context the lack of power factor correction. The real power efficiency is worse than the older version of the adapter which I have seen before from other manufacturers. The adapter does not meet the DOE6 requirements. The voltage was also very low in the 20 volt mode which is also out of tolerance with the USB specification. The 100 watt adapter and all the ports ran away, down to one. With one USB-C port it uses the power delivery 3.0 specification still. The USB port can deliver 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20 volt fixed output voltages and can also deliver a PPS output voltage up to 20 volts and do the full 100 watts. This adapter cost about $50, which is not bad for the power level. The power adapter turned off when overloaded at 108 watts, which is a safe level. No fires here. The 100 watt adapter did have some audible whine. When we look at the overall data, the idle power consumption is actually quite good and quiet. The general performance of this adapter is another one of those tails of two adapters. It is not amazing in the lower mode, but then in the higher power modes, it's great. The power efficiency is actually quite high. The adapter does meet the DOE6 requirements, but I would still go with the desktop or wall 100 watt multi-port adapters since they are much more aggressive with turning on the power factor correction. As expected, most of these power adapters don't have power factor correction, which is a technique to consume the least AC current for the equivalent power level. This means less loss in other components like wiring and transformers. Since 65 watt devices don't have power factor correction, we can expect them to have a little higher current use. The wave shape is also not so nice on all but some 100 plus watt adapters. The 100 watt adapter chooses to turn on PFC in the 15 or 20 volt mode only. We have seen this before. This hurts the performance quite a bit. When we take a look at the overall data for these adapters, we can see that the 100 watt adapter is in the middle with that sometimes on power factor correction pulling it down. For the 65 watt adapter, the older GAN2 adapter is much better. Lower idle and active power consumption and better power quality. Not much more to say about that one. The 30 watt category is a mess. Fairly low performance compared with the competition. It seems the lower the watts, the worse Bassius does. I am very curious about their 140 watt adapter, but I haven't been able to get that one yet. When looking at the idle graph, these are all over the place. The GAN3 65 watt though is using the most power and falls out of tolerance with the DOE6 requirements. The rest aren't too bad for idle power consumption, but the 30 watt adapters are noisy, so near zero for quality score. When looking at the active power graph, the 100 watt loses a little ground due to that half active power factor correction. The 65 watt adapters are sandwiched between Anchor and Anchor, and oddly, Anchor's newer adapter also sucks. Then down in the 30 watt range, the performance is worse than the competition. These Bassius adapters may fit some requirements, but essentially the only one I can say is acceptable in comparison with the competition is actually a 65 watt adapter, but it gets absolutely crushed by the 100 watt adapters with multiple ports, so I'm going to have to go with those for a recommendation still. Bassius is proud of that safety listing and they show it off in large letters much larger than most. They are trying to get the idle power consumption a little more in line with the DOE6 requirements, but as usual, some don't make it, and some do. 
The inclusion of PPS makes these adapters fairly wide use across the board. The price point seems to fly all over from overpriced for a poor performing adapter to rather inexpensive for the 30 watt adapters. I'm disappointed that these aren't better and on par with the larger adapters Bassia sells, and it shows that a company can make a range of adapters and not all of them are good from one brand. Hopefully they can step up the performance of these smaller adapters to be in line with their top tier adapters in the next versions. They still hold the 100 watt category crown though. Time to apply the stickers. These are tested and on the database. Search for Bassius on the pqs.app page and compare them all. Thanks for watching. Next week I'll be looking at these Energy brand power adapters. These are an offshoot of Delta power supplies who are pretty well known in the laptop power adapter market. There's a calendar on the website linked in the description of upcoming videos so check it out. I have many more of these adapters. Thanks again and bye.